Good evening and welcome once again to Straight from the Sky. I'm your talk show host, Bobby Tavila, and tonight we bring you a very important character in Cebu. He is the regional director of DepEd, or the Department of Education. He is director Salustiano T. Jimenez. And yes, we are going to learn about what's the happening of our school system, especially in this COVID era. Because after all, in the old days, we our problems were really lack of schools or lack of uh, uh, classrooms or lack of this and that. But today, our problem is even bigger because of the COVID-19. So we are really glad that uh, Director Jimenez is with us tonight so that you will be enlightened about what to do and what we will what the DepEd will be doing. And we'll be back with him after this break. Please don't go away. We'll be back shortly. Agal! Parang internet mo? Get the Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Up to 200 Mbps for fiber fast days. Switch to Sky Fiber. internet mo? Get the Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Up to 200 Mbps for fiber fast days. Switch to Sky Fiber. Three major financial needs to complete financial picture. One, investment. To generate continuing income for when you retire. Letting money work for you. Two, income protection. Life insurance to protect your family if you die too soon. Life insurance protection can help finance your children's education, pay estate tax, pay debts instantly. Number three, health care. To provide you health care when you retire or when you stop working, someone to take care of you when you get old. What if I could tell you about a product that provides complete solution to your three major financial needs? Kaiser Premium Health Builder 
provides total solution to your health care, investment, and insurance needs. Thank you for staying with us. It's really an honor and a pleasure to have with us Department of Education Regional Director 7, Celestiano T. Jimenez. Mayang gabi, sir. Ah, uh, mayang gabi, sir. Bubit. Huwag sa tanang man nagtanaw, no? So, I'm so glad nga uh, once in my life na naka, <laughs> kuhan mo, no? As my, my idol, no? So, <laughs> yung, uh, kuhan. You know, so, salamat you know, kayo. I'm I've so grateful. I've always wanted you on my show because uh, after all, the uh, Department of Education is really part of the lives of Filipinos. Especially when you're still a baby, all the way to when you get older. And uh, <laughs> ako mga problema is more on, uh, I did not realize nga ang Region 7, mga de ako kayo. So you oh, have yes. really a huge uh, undertaking when it comes to DepEd. So, but before yeah. we go to that, uh, Director, please tell me your life story again. Sa amin mo about sa Regional <laughs> Director 7. Ah, uh, okay. So, thank you very much for that, no? My life story, actually, it's not that challenging because uh, maybe God blessed me with, you know, so many people as uh, instruments for His help. So, actually, I'm a Buholano. Mm. Uh, I uh, was born in uh, Tugasi, Tafi, Buhol, oh, okay. uh, September 1969. So, mm. I'm already 50 years old now. And from there, I studied my... Uh, elementary in Tugas and also in Hitafi Central until grade 6. But in my high school, I uh, studied in a private school. No? So, and then in college, I studied here in Cebu. So it's where I started uh, uh, my career. So after graduation at the University of the Visayas in my undergrad, so I was taken in by uh, the university to to teach no? the, uh, in Pardo Gullias High School for seven years. So what, what subjects did you teach? So I taught, uh, I taught Araling Panlipunan, even uh, Araling Panlipunan because uh, I'm also a, a graduate of uh, political science and a Bachelor of Laws mm, okay. at that time. No? So as of now, is a uh, Juris Doctor. Uh, from there, after seven years, I transferred to the public school way back 1996. Mm. So in 1996, I, uh, I started as a teacher one. Then in 1998, I become teacher two. Then 1999, teacher three. In 2001, I became the, the school head as, as head teacher three. Then 2000, uh, 2003, as principal one. Then in 2006, as uh, division supervisor, uh, also uh, managing the private schools. Mm -hmm. And then so, 2006, I, I in Cebu and, City. I thought that uh, do I love both um, private schools? Actually, private schools, especially if they're offering uh, basic ed mm -hmm. from preschool <clears throat> to grade 12 or at before is uh, up to uh, uh, grade 10 or koan, fourth year high school. Mm -hmm. no? So, uh, so ed is actually uh, the one uh, recognizing the operation of private schools. So we give per permits to private schools. Mm, okay. So private schools, uh, especially offering basic ed, cannot, cannot open without a permit from the, uh, from the Department uh, of Education. Something new that I've yeah, heard. So uh, <laughs> they need to have, like, to open and operate for the first year. And then in the second year, if they will not be given the government recognition, so they need to renew their permit every year. So some of our private schools actually keep on renewing their permits <laughs> every year. But once they receive already the government recognition, so that is lifetime uh, recognition. Ah, so except, like yeah, except if uh, their, their secure, uh, SEC is already 50 years, so no more uh, corporation. Mm. So they need to also to reapply for deep ed because once the corporation is... Uh, cease its operation, so there will be <laughs> no more government recognition as well. So that's the time. And then from there, as uh, 2006, I became the supervisor in charge of private schools. Then 2008, I took the superintendent's examination, and I passed then. So that was uh, June of uh, 2008. And then I became the assistant schools division superintendent in Cebu City in September 2008. Mm. Then uh, from there... Uh, 
as assistant superintendent then uh, by uh, at uh, in 2012 I became the superintendent in Negros Oriental Province Division mm. so from 2012 until 2015 because by 2016 I became the assistant regional director uh, in Negros Island region mm. but uh, because of the dissolution of Negros Island region <laughs> I was transferred to uh, region 7 mm. so i became the assistant schools i mean assistant regional director in region 7 way back nine, uh, 2017 mm. now uh, last 2019 uh, june of 2019 uh, director hirota the former regional director of region 7 retired so i replaced her no so that's why i became the regional director in region 7 Good so that's uh, to know. actually I rose from the ranks. Uh, yeah, that's, that's very good. <laughs> all that's, the levels, uh, yeah, I passed through all the levels. Kastanan. No, yeah, yeah. Kasuway Kotanan, di noon kaayo dugay, but at least I also, also have the feel uh, mm. what's in there, no? Uh, being a teacher one. Uh, actually, sa teacher one pa ko, my first assignment was in Bunbun, mm. uh, Cebu City. So, uh, mountain school. Mountain uh, school. Yeah. How, how do you, what's your my, anong ta? Uh, how do you become a teacher? Ang doktor no, mayon ka 10 mm. years. Ang college, 4 years. Depende sa kung teacher, pila ka tuig. 4 years, actually, if, uh, sa og teacher, you have a koan. Mukuan kag undergrad, 4 years. And then you will take the licensure exam. So once you already have the licensure examination, uh, uh, the, you pass the licensure examination, then you can be allowed to teach. Now, in my case, uh, actually, when I graduated, it so happened nga I graduated uh, as an honor student in college. So, automatic man ta to sa mm. koan. Uh, automatic nga eligible. But I also took the examination. Yun but sa you are going to be uh, teaching uh, elementary, high school, or college? Daman, actually, oo, oh, oh, yeah. Kung, uh, mm -hmm. Before, naman ta kung koan yun ka, BE Ed, Bachelor of Elementary Education, purely... So you will uh, you will also uh, you will teach in the elementary. So kung BS Ed ka, mo teach sa kag high school, mm. no? So while kung for example kung BS Ed sa ka na kay uh, na kay specialization, makateach po kag high school. Oh. So ang ako before kay social studies kay political science man, and then uh, na sa goy ko ansa bachelor of uh, education. So mo na nakateach ko pag pag graduate din ako gipat ko anda ko sa uh, UV mm. no and then moto na ko high school so then, kaning being a teacher is also like uh, for lack of uh, uh, similarities murag pare kana bang ko ba na kay kanang what you call uh, calling from the lord nga git tawag ka nga muna imong trabaho uh, possibly because uh, my dream before was to become a priest <laughs> when I was still in high school because I, I studied I, I studied in a sectarian school no, in, in mm. high school in San uh, Santo Nino Institute in Bohol in Hitafi so na mga pari so murag gusto ko magpari but uh, <laughs> since I my, my, my parents and my grandparents don't want me to become a priest <laughs> the, actually I'm the youngest the only son, the only grandson. Mm. So, maputol ko, no? Ano na bang mga <laughs> concert ba nga? Maputol ang, maputol ang, 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 ang koan, family, ang, ang family line. line. Kay, uh, kay ako ra may lalaki, ako ra ay bugtong, bugtong mga kung apo nga lalaki sa side mm. sa kong mother. Kanya, bug, sa ilaha, niya kamanghuran pa yun. <laughs> Upat mi sa magsuon, namatay ang usa, tulumin na habilin, and pulo sila babae. Ako ra mm. ay lalaki, kamanghuran. So, uh, muna nga, Koan, but uh, siguro I'm not destined to become a priest. So, <laughs> ang pinakaduol sad sa priesthood is to become e, an educator. Yeah. Kana lagi yeah. koan mo rag wow ba? Oh, oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's Pero, like uh, it's not easy uh, to be mm. uh, to be a teacher. Ah, yeah. Kay, you, you need to have a passion yod yeah. and love for children. Correct, no? Kay or else, sa high school. Kay if you don't love children, that would be very difficult. Correct, correct. If uh, if you have what you call even a a little uh, lack of passion, ah, then yes. you will have a problem. Yeah, yes. Okay, the, best, the best way of working is to love 
what you are doing, doing, and then you are no longer yeah. working. Yeah, you're happy uh, working with fun. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's the thing. So people think that you are working, but for you, the one working, you feel uh, it's just for fun. So passion, that's passion. Yes, and that's yeah, really true. If you have the passion, so you will never complain. Say mga sacrifices ba? Well, this is what you call. Uh, you were, uh, you took over from uh, Director Herbosa, so uh, yes. that will be. Uh, that was a 2019. Yes, yeah. And this is more than now, a year already. Yeah, yeah. so it's been a, more than a year, and we'll be back with uh, Director Jimenez after this break. Please don't go away. Internet mo? Get the Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Up to 200 Mbps for fiber fast days. Hi. Switch to Sky Fiber. Kasi, parang internet mo. Get the Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Up to 200 Mbps for fiber fast days. Ako, single. Switch to Sky Fiber. staying with us you know uh, director Jimenez has been old more than a year and he is probably the most experienced when it comes to what's happening to this global pandemic because what do you in any of the regional directors whether on any region 
nga sa problema that we are having today. I mean, for instance, last month was supposed to be the school year June. Yes. And, you know, when June comes, DepEd is the busiest people interview them, people want to know on say plano, kuwang yeah. bag classroom, kuwang bag school or kuwang bag maestra. So these are problems now, so maybe I should ask you, Director, nga, what is your main concern when it comes to COVID? Karon nga, gisiraduan ang lahi naman ron ng inyong teaching ways. Okay, so thank you for that, uh, Sir Bobet. Uh, actually, our challenge, the big challenge now of the Department of Education is uh, this uncertainty no, of mm. the future. Correct. Okay? Uh, like supposedly, deep ed uh, in the usual uh, situation, ang deep ed mag start of class opening June, as what you mentioned. But mm. this time, because of the pandemic, so we extended it to uh, August 24. Now, uh, to at least, nga, we are still in the, uh, in the kuansa kanang uh, compliance to the law nga sa kanang RA 7797 nga kanang ang, ang opening of classes will be within June and August. Mm. So wala pa man siya ma-amend. So mm. more ang ato ag yung gi mo na gikuan sa Department of Education with the leadership of course na uh, sa to ang pinalangga nga uh, Bisaya po si Ma'am Liling Briones. Correct, no? So mo na nga August 24 and we set that uh, August 24. Our another challenge aside from that is on our preparations actually. Mm. So, because this will be a, a very special school year, the school year 2020-2021, the fact that we cannot do the, the, the traditional way of teaching our learners. Mm. So, we have, uh, we have another way of teaching them. That's why there are so uh, many or varied modalities that we will be using and adapting uh, this school year 2020-2021. Yeah. Aside from that, uh, ang atong ubang mga challenges ka ng, uh, how we could implement them and then how could we uh, get more partners to support us in the implementation of the kind of modality that we will be adapting or we will be implementing this school year 2020-21. So all those, the preparations for our teachers because our teachers uh, need uh, capacity building because before, Face to face lang dirit so uh, mm. expert na tanan to mga teachers wa nagitay wa nagitay problema mm. but with this uh, new normal so our teachers also have some challenges especially those who do not know how to use uh, computers, computers oh. oh do not even uh, or do like, not even own oh, computers own computers <coughs> na mga labi na karon ang trainings for teachers are more on virtual mm. so how to use the kanang na ay virtual uh, classrooms, mm. mga Google Classroom. Mm. So, mao na itong ipagtudlo sa ila karon. Yan ang mga teachers manggod nga murag mature. Dila ito na itong tigo, ingnon nga tigo lang, but mature. <laughs> mature na. Yeah, o edad edaran. <laughs> nga, kanang koan gyod ba? Nga, maingon, ma Sir, mahadlok pa may magunit sa mouse. <laughs> so, that's why I, I keep on telling them nga, uh, actually, it's just for the first, no? After that, Gunit kag mouse every day kada adlaw. I, I know for sure after a week you're already used to it and it just kuan lang yun. Ako silang gisaitan really example o oh, practice o oh, mm. uh, ako silang gisaitan nga like what I did before nga during my time wala mag yun na unit sa computer ang ako ang gi Kanong sa man ang tudlo computer ang depend. <laughs> oh, bag o bag o man lang. Bago, ako bago, I graduated 2009 sa akong undergrad. I started mm. to teach uh, 2009 at age 19. Si Noy. Una wa gyud ta mi unit ato niya pagka following year pag sugod ako tudlo na nay mga computer ang eskwelahan kay mo to sugod og pa kanang uh, kuan sa computer <laughs> sa mga eskwelahan. Mm. Ni ako pay mo program sa mo ang uh, principal program o na mga program, na mga uh, activities, punya magsalig ko sa among computer teacher, nga busy po, murag, <laughs> niya, say, di tak, labi nag di tak, ka, o yun po, sa, ma, makuhan, dili, maos, mukha om sa itong gusto, mm. po, nang na, napugos yung kong cut on, mo, nang ikaw ba nga, kanang, it's a matter of will. So, if there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. So, mo, sa nato mga teachers, but uh, uh, as I said, uh, ato sa mga teachers, uh, I know they are resilient, how many crises they been through, and then they still stand and uh, survive, no? So same with this pandemic, possibly, no? Nga 
uh, o kana lang mga butang uh, makatuna na nila i know they are professionals and they can uh, they can become they can skilled <laughs> in their in this uh, kuan o oh, oh, ako ane. bitaw uh, uh, director uh, i'm now what 33 years in uh, the uh, what you call media media, media. and since I, i did not train to be a, a journalist Uh, it was Max Oliven, the late Max Oliven, who taught me how to write. And mm -hmm. um, I found writing with my hand difficult. It took me practically almost a whole day because mm -hmm. So I was one of the first uh, journalists here in Cebu to adapt to a computer. Mm -hmm. But the computer, one computer, one pa. Uh, mm -hmm. Karang pag yun, basic yun kayo ba? Then, uh, pagpas, pagpadaan na, was supposed to be uh, katong kuan pa, fax machine. So, ang computer, ito pang dos. oh itong dos pa. I Ipasok niya ko. Ang nakuan lang na ako, okay, <laughs> nakaskwila ko, siguro mga 30, more than 30 years ago, nakaskwila ko computer. Uh, there was somebody oh. offering a computer, Fortran, uh, Cobol. Mm. I studied that, and mm. that's when I learned about mga kuan sa computer. So I was really the first. In fact, I would be proud to tell you nga, I'm also the first journalist to use a cell phone. <coughs> so, <laughs> ang akong yeah. cell phone number ko, 5010060. Wow! Di ko kalimot. And still memorized. <laughs> uh, sa isinta pa ko. <laughs> so no, you can imagine how things uh, evolved also for a guy who have to learn how oh, to become yeah. a proper journalist. So, in a way, nagkakat on sa ko into mm. the computer world. So, kamo, kanang mga maestra ninyo, it's also good to learn that uh, yeah. at least they are also adjusting. Yeah, so, yeah. ang problema lang karong panahon na is there are now what you call new technologies. Oh, yes. Like, for instance, digital TV, uh, kanang transmission by a via kuan kaning kaning sa tv in yes, fact yes. Uh, my last show last week was the first time in my 20 years history in this show na mm. uh, nag zoom ah okay nag zoom ko ang mm -hmm. uh, akong akong guest was uh, Bobby Joseph in Alabang mm -hmm. so it was the first time i tried zoom because i have no choice but to really also adjust yes. to the times so muna siya Muna kay Muna ako ingon nga we need to be updated and upgraded because if we are not then we will be alienated to the world we are in. Yes, that's uh, right. We'll be left behind. So <laughs> So ang karon ang problema will be how the uh, teachers will adjust. Yeah. Uh, actually what we did no for the regional office 7, Deep Ed Region 7. Uh, we have trainings uh, like uh, last May of this year. Uh, the regional office conducted webinars uh, to uh, orient our teachers on how no, to use the, the computers and how to uh, prepare Google Classrooms mm. or uh, virtual classrooms. So that's, uh, that's the thing. So uh, the regional office... Uh, trained our our uh, supervisors in the division office we have the we have 19 divisions in uh, central visayas uh, comprising also mga around 82,000 uh, more or less teaching and non teaching personnel for central visayas so uh, from from the region to the division and the division also cascaded their trainings to the schools so that's how we did it so that the the level of the teachers really will be capacitated on these things So, daghan mingi pang himo, sir. We have or even the timeline. So, to prepare them for the August opening. Nga in time nga August, so maka maridi na yun sila. Well, it's already next month. Ah yes. And problem. We are already excited. We hope makable because I have my grandchildren. Yes. They're already starting school with. Ateneo di Cebu or Sacred Heart, pero koan online. Online, yes. Mo na ingon lagi nga it's really a what you call because not everybody can afford the computers. So that is an issue that we have to complain or 
I mean, a challenge that you have to face, and we need yes. to really face it frontally. And we'll be back with Director Jimenez after this break. Please don't go away. Thank you. Bilis makasound trip. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. For today's look. Bilis makaganda. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Elu pare. Bilis makavikay. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Thank you for staying with us. We're now halfway to the show talking about our future of our schools. And we're with Salus Director Salustiano T. Jimenez, Regional Director of uh, Region 7 in DepEd. And yes, <clears throat> we're discussing about our future. And one of the things a little bit, we'll backtrack a little bit, is our shift to K-12. to How yeah. is it now? What was the regional director at that time? But, ah, yeah, yeah. but I was a superintendent then <coughs> during Already. the time when uh, K-12 been implemented. Mm. Uh, so uh, the law on K-12. Uh, was there a, what you call, resistance from the DepEd? Uh, so far, uh, there's no resistance, sir, uh, sir Bobet. There's no resistance from DepEd. 
uh, we uh, DepEd is really accepting that no nga uh, uh, we'll be implementing and supporting the K to 12 no of the uh, uh, K to 12 so kinder to grade 12 because uh, DepEd also see it that uh, all throughout the world Philippines is one of the the very few uh, who offered uh, the basic ed only uh, <coughs> 10 years. No? Mm, that's Ita true. Na nga 10 years. Correct. All uh. the rest, na, na, that's one of the uh, foreseen nga <coughs> reason nga ang Philippines, instead of going up, ang ato ang, ato ang quality of education na lag behind ta in some other Asian countries. That's why I supported K-12. Because some other countries already been mm -hmm. implementing K-12 uh, years back. Yang kita na wahi na noon ta, nga kita mo ay kanunay nga mag, uh, mag trendsetter, nga kita mo ay kanunay mo taas kaayo ang atong quality sa education, but na naungusan yun ta noon. Mm, so because true. of that, uh, uh, to answer that, to address that concern, that's why we have to implement the K-12 program of the government. So, especially that, aside from that, ang K-12 uh, no, program, ang the last two years, uh, the senior high school is more on skills uh, training that our learners will be equipped with the skills necessary for them to live as a, a, a very, uh, uh, let's say, responsible and productive individuals or citizens in our country. Kay, like, labi na sa prime, uh, public schools nga most of our graduates in public schools in the basic ed will not uh, push through or proceed to college so mm. what will happen to them before the K-12 our graduates uh, uh, age 15 mo graduate na sa high school mm. then 15 dili pa sila job ready, ready. Mm. so what will happen to them if ever <coughs> wala pa sila dili sila mo eskwela Kay wala sa kwarta, kay gikan ko public. So, malag behind, ara sila sa balay, magpundo. O trabaho sa sila, ang ilang trabaho, dilipod sila dawaton, kay kulang sa edad. Dili pa sila, pwede makasign o mga contract, dili sila makakuan. Kay 15 years old, they, we have to wait for eight to be 18. Yes. So, <coughs> mauna nga, with this uh, K-12, instead nga muad to sa college, based on survey, when in fact, when I was in uh, Cebu City, as assistant superintendent, I was uh, tasked to have a survey and a re uh, research on this, no? how many graduates of our public schools will proceed to college. And in, in the survey, in the research that I did, uh, conduct uh, about 75% of our graduates in high school will not proceed to college. Mm. So, mo na natao na ang city scholarship program mm. okay. because of that, uh, because of that uh, research. Uh, para ma mapadayon yun ang college at mga bata. So, kaning K-12, mo ni mo address sa kana nga gap. No? So, uh, instead of our uh, learners to graduate at age 15, so, an adding two years, so they will graduate at age 17 or 18 to be exact. So, once they graduate as uh, 18 years old and they have the skills, so they can, uh, they can learn a job, they can be hired. So, even while waiting for uh, possibly ilang budget for uh, to proceed college. Well, so money <coughs> kabangan usa sa That's exactly what happened to my eldest uh, grandson. Mm. Kay nigo siya sa K12. Diretso mm. na ta siya sa college. Oo. Oh, oh. Karon pa siya mo to college niya. Uh, <coughs> gidawa siya sa Ateneo. Mm. Ang problema online lang una in the meantime. Mm. Mo na ingon lagi nga but uh, like I said, uh, because I supported uh, K K12. Uh, sakto siya kay ako mismo uh, I remember mm. myself I graduated wap ako 18 mm. I could not even sign legal papers oh, yeah, so yeah, that, that's one <laughs> so I, I, I wanted to uh, uh, to look for a job but my father no, wanted to me to work in the office mm. uh, sa tagiyam may sa Oriente Theater so magatuhan mm. kong Manila but then, kumupirma kong something, munguta na sila, hmm. 18 na ba kanong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> di pa. Oh, di si so, city, or di si pa ko, di city. Mm -hmm. So, di pwede. Di pwede. Correct. So, that was a problem at that time. 
sa akong panahon no na mm. ko na good ko senior na good ko so i'm glad that gate to 12 is uh, kana ang iyang resistance na wala mm. oh, yeah, kibaw yeah. ko nga na resistance yeah, at that time <clears throat> at that time but uh, i notice now that uh, nawa na ng resistance yes. but then uh, ikaw ron nga uh, regional director naman ka sa 2020 you are now uh, what you call uh, Uh, accepting uh, problems like, for instance, enrollment option via email. Karon. Ah, oh, dagan, actually, ka. we have different options oh, in the na, enrollment. Na ay oh, Facebook oh. Messenger, oh, na yeah, ay yeah. via yeah. Google Form. Google Form. <laughs> uh, drop boxes. <coughs> oh. Through kiosks. Oh, <laughs> so, there are lots of uh, <laughs> ways. More like <laughs> Mo. mga varied uh, ways now. Nga, kung sa una, inahanglan yun face-to-face, going to the school, Maog to enroll your oh. children. But now, with a different platforms or different ways, they can enroll. Nga, napay, baya SMS. Oo. Oh, oh. Ang problema Text, oh. is, uh, not everybody's got a cell phone. Not everybody's oh, yeah. got a computer. What do you do to those students? Nga? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's why uh, I mentioned, uh, we have varied uh, ways of doing things. No? So, If uh, they are not uh, accessible, no, sa di, di cannot access through SMS, through Google Forms, through mm. kuan, uh, especially the hinterland area, sa mga mountain schools or sa mga island schools. So what we did is we had uh, uh, drop boxes or kiosks, no. So we coordinated with our barangay officials, mga purok leaders or sitios. Uh, And then, na ay designated areas wherein butangan sa mga butangan atong mga forms like enrollment forms and uh, survey forms. Kaya karon duhaman ato ang uh, gi, gi pa fill up sa atong mga parents karon uh, or guardian sir Bobit uh, ang enrollment form o ang survey form. Mm. Mm. So ato nila kwaon, ato na po nila idrap niya yeah. every every week or maybe Every other day, kwa on rapunto dito sa either atong mga teachers or magpatabang po das atong mga government officials like sa mga barangay officials and uh, purok leaders para mahatag sa eskwilahan aron ma-encode sa ito ang uh, LIS. No? Well, in oh, my, that, that's how uh, we did it. My suggestion, uh, karon nga kinanglan mag social distancing, mm-hmm. face mask, uh, uh, kanang uh, washing of hands. Uh, for those uh, kanang mga ano ta, sa elementary and high school na di ka afford, ang suggestion nako oblihin yun na ano yung eskwilahan. You have mm-hmm. to open a school, let them, and then the school seats will be social distancing, and then there will be teachers with all the masks and all the... Yeah. I think if that is kay hapit naman next, next month next naman, month, yes. <clears throat> at least there will be schools Nya, klarohan lang hay puyo ang sa distansya. So, the people who cannot afford uh, these new technologies because they're just poor, mm-hmm. I think if DepEd can give them a chance to really earn or learn, uh, I think, I think it would be a, still a possible good idea because for me, uh, Someday, maka afford the ilang parents tingali, then they can go on to online. But is, let's say uh, grade five, niya kaniyang grade yeah. five na ay na ay ga online, na asay nga kan di katungwa yung mga computers nagskuil lang yun. Maybe if that's what we can do, then maybe we can really help everyone. Yeah, actually that's a very welcoming idea, Sir Bubet, and we already. Uh, Actually, that was the first uh, uh, modality, the, the blended learning, mm. is the modality that we want also to implement. No, mm. that is uh, included in our learning continuity plan. But when the president announced that no face to face, so we we changed our our uh, learning continuity plan to have a modality that uh, wala nagyo face to face. Maon nga kay kung pwede pa lang, mayingon pa lang si President, okay, with the social distance. That is actually our first 
mao na karon nga mo ang gi challenge ang challenge kayo karon kay wala magud giingon giingon magud nga wala gi face to face okay. and our secretary <clears throat> Ma'am Liling Brones also uh, uh, mo motuman jud siya sa unsay gi kuans ni presidente nga wala sa face to face well if no. that's the case i will write a column mm -hmm. next week so okay. that uh, i will make that suggestion so tal mm -hmm. mo basa man sila Uh, Secretary Briones, ah, yes. Mokwan Mana. So at least yeah. uh, by so, that, ma address ang tanang problema. Okay. So if if you have that column, I will I will forward it. We can have a uh, no, I will check and then I will forward it directly to Mam Ma Liling <laughs> because uh, at least it will also be posted in our uh, yeah. uh, media monitoring because yeah. in the media monitoring, all the feeds that uh, uh, are for deep ed will also be placed there. So even the president can read, no. So yeah. I, I hope uh, that uh, yeah. that will be, ano. Uh, okay, thank you. Like and even like in Sikihor, <coughs> there is no COVID yeah, in Sikihor, no but COVID. because of the policy now that I'll there is no the face to face. Sikihor issue. Yes, uh, wala, wala good. We cannot do anything. I, I receive even uh, calls from private schools and other uh, uh, private schools in Bohol. Mm. Uh, they're even asking at least. Uh, once a week one day for face to face but because of that statement no it uh, actually it's a sweeping statement that no face to face so that is what we are also uh, uh doing now and preparing for that Good. but eventually mm -hmm. uh, in times that it will be okay no uh, this coming august 20 that is really a very welcoming idea nga deep ed can do that okay if that will be implemented It would be easier for us to uh, to at least to communicate with our learners and to give instructions to our learners. Okay, as of now, what we can do is do we will be using the modular, so learners will get the modules uh, through the parents. Their parents will get the modules, and then they will have the the uh, learning at home. Pero mao lagi ang atong kwan lahi yud atong na agi mga klarong instruction from our teachers nga mo idad on sa kuan pwede man sad og uh, maybe uh, twice a week na ang mm -hmm. bata and then mag three days adto sila sa kanang na ay kuan sa yeah it's a matter malay. it's a matter of it's a matter of, of adjusting that, that, that can be possible yeah. but mo lagi akong emphasize lang for now because uh, that's the policy so mo lang say amo ang gipangandaman um, pero eventually kung kung mapwede na then dali ra kay pag shift Oh, Sige, so that kayo. is really oh. a very good idea and we'll be back with yes. uh, Director Jimenez after this final break. Please don't go away. Huwag mo siyang pakasalan! Bagal kasi. Parang internet mo? Get the Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Up to 200 Mbps for fiber fast days. Ako single. Switch to Sky Fiber. Thank you. Bilis maka sound trip. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. For today's look. Bilis maka ganda. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Elu pare. Bilis maka VK. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. The theory of decreasing responsibility explains how your life insurance needs change over time. In the early years, you may need a lot of life insurance coverage, but in the later years, you may not. In the early years, when you're younger, you don't have a lot of money, but in the later years, you'd better have money. How does this fit with your insurance needs? Today, when you're young, loss of income due to a premature death would be devastating. Your children are young and you might have high debt and a house mortgage. Your need for insurance is highest at this time. When you get older, retirement income is needed. Your children are grown, your debts are lower, and your mortgage is paid. If you have savings, you are self-insured, diminishing your needs for insurance. That's the theory of decreasing responsibility. By having life insurance when your financial responsibilities are the greatest, 
you can have peace of mind knowing your family's future is protected. Thank you for staying with us. So right now, uh, how many students have enrolled already with these enrollment systems that you've got so many? Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, actually, mm. uh, Sir Bobet, uh, our enrollment now in Central Visayas, malipay lang punta, no? Because we reached already 1,470,000 more or less, mm. no? For Central Visayas. So, uh, that is already for public schools. We already, we reached already 80% of our uh, target. target based mm. on the enrollment last year. Mm. So, our challenge now is for the private schools. What do you uh, mean enrollment. challenge? Uh, what do you mean by challenge? Now, we're challenged because until now, uh, private schools enrollment is still at uh, 23%. Only? Yes, 23% uh, ah. of the previous enrollment. So, uh, might be uh, parents and uh, <coughs> guardians are still hesitant to enroll, no? But that's why uh, uh, I hope that the parents or guardians will decide now whether to enroll their children in the private schools or they will transfer it kay maghuna-huna pa mang kuno ba basin ang ilang dughan gusto pa nga mo stay sa private pero maghuna-huna po sila nga ang bulsa siguro miingon pod nga adto lang sa public so ug di decide nga it's about time to decide na nga maka-decide na gyud sila no kay aron ma kung moari mag gyud sila mo decide og mag public so at least we can include uh, them uh, ang ilang mga bata in our preparations kay magprepare pa tayo mga modules uh, so ang printing pa sa modules ang reproduction if if they will enroll late na nya dili na nya sila matagaan na pud nato og mga modules mingon na pud nga ah, dip, eh, dili gyud siya ready kay mo nang dili man kapanghatag nya mm -hmm. it turn out nga it's not really the fault of deep ed because uh, parents didn't enroll their children Correct. as early as possible uh, i would like to believe mm -hmm. Uh, it could be possible that a lot of these uh, people studying in private schools, their children, I mean their parents, have no jobs anymore. And since uh, the economy has been shut down and uh, we have not gone back uh, to uh, what you call, uh, so we're still in community quarantine, the um, problem will be how to restart the economy, for instance. If you talk about a <clears throat> kanang tourist guide, well, tourist okay. guide for sure ang iyang bata ng eskwela ng private, private school. school. Kaya ka-afford mo na sila. Yes. But what may turista? So what na sila trabaho ron? So the same thing with people working in the hotels. Sa uh, una mga hotels, kung 500 rooms ka, may lang swerte ka kung ni mo 100 rooms, kung ni abli ka 100 rooms, na itaw ka ron. Correct, so correct. kaya what may international flight? Then it's not only the problem of Cebu, it's also the problem of the world. The world. Uh, Kay yeah. mga turista ngagika Germany, France would not fly here because had looks at sila. Economy, really. <coughs> so Going really, on. it's a problem that we have to really uh, consider. That uh, maybe chances are, ang kaning mga parents in the private schools are thinking of putting their kids into. Uh, government <laughs> schools. Uh, so, <laughs> ang question din ha is, ang ilang standard, I think the standard now has improved compared to before. Kay, K-12 K naman. Yeah, we have the K-12. <coughs> so far, as to the, the result, uh, we've been uh, implementing the full circle of the K-12. Mm. So, we already have graduates of uh, grade 12, no? And then, most of our grade 12 graduates, especially those who uh, uh, took the what is this the TVL truck mm. sa kaning ato ang mga uh, TVL mm. na TikVok so daghan gali kayo nga paghuman trabaho dayon mm. or uh, pag kuha nila sa ilahang immersion paghuman sa immersion giabsorb ra po dayon sa company correct oh. so murag dako sa nagtabang para nako sa companies matong industries kay unyag mag immerse na mga bata di already kan can check in say mga Kumpanya. mga possible o oh, mga ilaga potentials correct kadi mga potentials nga mm. no need of just an interview nga ilang i-hire correct correct but kadi kita gyud nila for how many months been there unya o kinsay mga maayo awa na pag 
ang uban pang ofera na mao nang uban sa mga bata dili na lang mudla house og school and college kay gi ofera na og trabaho but anyway uh, yeah. at least the the good thing there is nakakuha di gapon sila og trabaho but you remember uh, the bigger problem that uh, the Duterte administration has to face is the presence of the overseas foreign workers Oh, so because kaning yes. OFWs. So yeah. una, dagko kaning hatag kada tuig by yeah, the billions. No? Kanang ilang earnings, mga ipadaan nila din sa ato. Yes. Niya, kana sila, uh, like, if you talk about Hong Kong, mm. kaning Hong Kong karon grabe kayo yung protesta. Yeah, so, yeah. hadlock ng so mga main, tao main ay trabaho. China. So, unsawa man nila sweldo sa ilang nunta, nagbantay sila mga, mga bata. bata. Correct. So, that is a huge problem. Saudi Arabia, karon. If you go into Kuwait, if I remember, yeah. uh, Dubai, ang ang Dubai had about 12 percent Filipinos working yeah, there. Yeah. But bagol ko kita sa YouTube nga ang Dubai empty ang streets. That means yeah. why why negosyo? Ang oil industry where a lot of Filipinos are working, working. has also stopped. Uh, ang ilang sauna, yeah. that golden goose, may tawag nila ng oil nila, mm. it's no longer a golden goose. So, yeah. it's really a trouble that is connected all the way to our people here. So, kanang mga OFW sauna, for sure high school nala or college, college. mga anak, mm. for yeah. sure yeah. na agin na private school. So, can, can they afford the private school education now? Muna yeah, problema. Yeah. Muna mga concern na mo. That's why <clears throat> Uh, mao na ako ang concern po uh, sa ato as a regional office nga mag uh, atog yung gi agni gyud atong mga parents or guardians nga it is now time to decide yod mm. kay para kung maka-decide na sila nga mobalhin so at least they still have time ang ang deep ed also has time to prepare for whatever mm. uh, mga preparations needed para sa opening of classes labi na karon unlike before nga Libro, so um, transfer di kaya tama problema kay libro naman ang tanaw na to. Mm. Karon kay the modules, and Computer then we pa. are also <laughs> challenged by the 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 budget mm. kay ang pag reproduce ana. Mm. So, simply o pila enrollment mo ragi atong i reproduce. Mm. Di kita magpa takag padaghan o reproduce nga wala sa enrollment. Yao magadto na sila mo pa enroll sa after nas enrollment period. Dili na sila ma dili na sila ma appeal sa budget dili na pa-appeal sa ato ang computation so mo lagi na mo na imo ang concern karon mo na uh, gi-extend na gayud nato ang enrollment up to uh, July 15 so i do hope na atong parents will decide before July 15 and magpa-enroll na gyud sila wow so ang um, there is an extension oo oh, oh, kano oh. sa man to inyong ending so, sa possibly June 30 June 30 unta oh, oh. kay aron maka-prepare mi kay karon Magsugod naman unta may karon og kanang mag-start na og mag uh, reproduc uh, reproduction sa mga modules, mm, sa mm. mga self-learning kits, sa mga activity sheets. But ato pang gihuwat nga mo end gyud ang ato ang kuan, mo end ang July uh, 15 para maka-start kay base ning yag makasugod na ta, siyempre ang procurement mo follow gyud ta sa RA9184 kay bisan pag pandemic, ang kuwa di man maingon nga Ako, pandemic maroon, di lang siya mo follow aning uh, <laughs> Maura, procurement tino. procedure. But, <laughs> but mga said, ang mahadlokan po so, dito ang mga kaning, tao. So, uh, kaning July 15, par, para ni sa uh, government uh, schools? Yes, government schools. Ang sa, sa private schools? Uh, sa private schools, wala ta mag-set o deadline sa private schools because it would be dependent magod sa ilahang school na may ubang mga private schools will be opening even September pa. Mm. So, depende man sa ila kay ang ato po ana ang mga private schools dili man po sila ka-demand sa ilang mga parents. Kau, enroll na gyud mo mm. ay labi na it, it, it entails financial uh, kanang uh, consideration. Yeah, that's so, really true. That, that, that's the kuan po. No? You know, this the beauty of this uh, interview with you, Director Jimenez, is I'm also learning. Uh, I'm learning a lot yeah. From this, yeah. because for instance, I did not realize until uh, we talked about OFWs uh, mm -hmm. that will be a problem for these children. Kaysa una to, or sila sa abroad. Kaya magpadara magkwarta ang parents. Karo na uli na sila. Unsaon na nila bayad na ng ilang skwilahan. Correct, correct. So it is an issue that needs to be addressed. And uh, I'm glad that now uh, you told me nga, uh, 
they adjust from June 30 to uh, July, 15. July 15. So that is a good uh, extension, which I hope that uh, our parents would really decide. If you yeah. think that you should bring your uh, children from a private school to a, a government okay. school in DepEd, kay hadlok tayo ang pride man o sahay maguna kay gikan ng kog kanang private school yan eh arin na lang kami sila sa kuan but your education of your children is a very primaral uh, what you yeah. call uh, uh, priority Important, to your so. for your family so that yeah. your children would be an educated lot yeah. unfortunately we run out of time we we'll just ask director Jimenez for his parting shot after this final break, please don't go away. First song. Thank you. Bilis makasound trip. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. For today's look. Bilis makaganda. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Oh! Elu pare. Bilis makavacay. Ganyan sa Sky Fiber Super Speed Plans. Thank you for staying with us. Let's now ask Director Jimenez for his parting shots. Director? Okay, uh, once again, thank you very much, Sir Bubit Avila, for the op opportunity to be with you today. And uh, also, uh, to all our viewers, uh, again, good evening. Uh, my, my ano lang is that education must continue, mm. regardless of what. Now, what is important here is uh, we need everybody, each one of us, to give our share in order that the, uh, the learners, the children whom we wanted to become somebody in the future who will be replacing us will be the kind of, uh, kind of citizens that uh, our, our uh, country is wishing to have. Please help the Department of Education in our, in our, uh, in our push, in our struggle uh, to continue education amidst this pandemic crisis. So uh, let's all together uh, heal as one, and let's all together be for the Department of Education and for the education of our children. Thank you very much, and God bless everyone. Well, thank you so much, uh, Director Jimenez, for enlightening our televiewers, including me. I've learned a lot <laughs> that, for instance, I did not realize kung, uh, like what the President Duterte insisted na there will be no face-to-face -face schools. Ang mahitabo na katotaw mga pubri nga uh, they can afford a cell phone or computer, how can they really teach their children? Mabiaan na sila. So the only way is really uh, try to, to change minds. And, and I will write a column on next week on this one because for me, the education of all is very important. And really... We really learned a lot from this interview with Director Jimenez, and I'm really glad that you've heard it here in Straight from the Sky. And Bobby Tabila, thank you and good night. <laughs>